Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today online at FBC Sterlington. My name is Cody Keys. I'm the associate pastor here at the church and uh, whether you're watching us on Facebook or YouTube or our church online platform, thank you so much uh, for taking the time today just to uh, watch and sing and uh, dive into God's Word together. Uh, before we jump into a time of singing this morning, I just got some updates for you. Um, this week, our governor has moved us into phase two of this regathering plan, okay? Um, so at First Baptist Church, what that means for us is we're actually going to continue doing things the way that we have been doing them. So we'll be in two services on campus, a nine o'clock service and an 11 o'clock service. But with that being said, um, because we're in phase two now, uh, this next Sunday, we will be adding back uh, child care for um, preschool and nursery only at our 11 o'clock service only. Um, so for those of you who are sitting at home right now watching, and the reason you're doing that is because you don't want to be chasing your preschoolers around the church, then uh, the next week, uh, we would love for you to join us even back here on the physical campus and we will have preschool and nursery for you. Um, but just for us and for our benefit and for your benefit too, if you wouldn't mind um, sending us a message uh, at the church just to kind of RSVP to let us know uh, what preschoolers you're bringing um, that just helps us be prepared and uh, we're going to try to do our preschool and nursery in the safest way possible um, for your family and also for our church. Um, but just please RSVP in that and we're excited just to, to see you again. Um, but thank you for joining us today. I'm going to pray for us and then we're going to jump into a time of singing together this morning. Let's pray. God, thank you um, so much just for your word and thank you um, just for the fact that uh, your word teaches us that we should walk in, in light and walk in wisdom. God. And I just pray that today, Father, as, as Ben continues teaching us through the book of Ephesians, Father, that we would uh, just take some time and pause and ask you just to uh, forgive us of anything that's in our lives that might be keeping us from experiencing you and who you are this morning, Lord. So I just pray, even now as we take a moment to sing together, uh, whether we're at the church or whether we're sitting in our living rooms or wherever we are, God, I just pray that we would uh, recognize that your spirit is with us, God, and you are worthy of our worship wherever we are. God, so just help for us to join you uh, today. God, we love you. It's in your heavenly name I pray. You were never made with a melody. You surround me with a song. Oh, deliverance from my enemies Until all my fear is gone I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God From my mother's womb You have chosen me Lord has called my name I've been born again into your family Your blood runs through my veins I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a 
child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God
Well, good morning. Thanks for uh, tuning in again today uh, in whichever platform that you've chosen to join us online. Uh, it means so much to us that you make this a priority each weekend. If you're a guest, man, thanks for tuning in again today and, and being here. And maybe if you've never visited our church, man, we look forward to hopefully getting to meet you in the days ahead as things begin to allow us to regather in larger numbers. Hey, today we're going to continue our series, Walk This Way. Uh, we've been kind of looking at Ephesians chapter 5 and working our way through that. And the theme has been just Paul's idea of what it means to walk as a child of God. In chapter 5, verse 1, he said for us to imitate God as beloved children. And he begins this conversation in verse 2 by saying, and walk in love. And then later on, as we looked at last week, he said for us to walk in light. Today, in the verses that we'll look at, he's going to challenge us to walk in wisdom. And for Paul, the idea of walking was the idea of how you and I live. It's what we do, what we think, our behaviors. And so today, I want to begin with a simple question. Have you ever had a chance to walk around somewhere new, somewhere that you have never been before? I don't know about you, but I know that I have a few times. And one of the places that stands out for me is Antigua, Guatemala. As we would take mission trips down there, when we first started going down there with, my, with myself and my wife, and we would go with another group, and I remember finding myself at one point uh, kind of walking by myself in, uh, in the city. And the city, for me, a lot of the, of the things down there, it's beautiful, but a lot of it looks alike. And so if you don't know where you're going, and if you're not sure uh, what the street names are or any of those things, it's not hard hard to get lost because you're not sure. You, you think you have an idea, but man, it's just difficult because you're not sure of how to walk and where to walk and even where you're going. So I know that for me, when I'm walking in Antigua, that I need a couple of things. One, I need to pay attention to where I am. Where am I beginning this journey or where am I when I feel like, uh-oh, I might be getting into a place I'm unsure. But the second thing that I need is I need to know where I'm trying to get to. Now, I don't want to just wander the city, although there have been times that we've just explored, but, but even then, you want to know, hey, what am I looking for? Where am I going, and, and how do I get back? And one of the things that changes that journey for somebody is being with someone else who already knows the answers. It's walking with someone who knows where you're going, knows where you are, and knows how to get from point A to point B. And so Paul now, as he's talked to us about this living in or walking in light and walking in love, he now comes to the third one of walking in wisdom. And walking in wisdom is a little different than the two things he's told us before. The two things before were, were born out of our relationship with God, that, that we now are children who are loved. And so we're to live in that love and live out of that love to those around us. We're, we're children who are in the light. And so because we know the light of our Father, we shine the light into the darkness of our own, uh, of our own world. And God's light shines in our own hearts to change, continue to change us and make us new. But when you get to the challenge to walk in wisdom, wisdom is the ability not just to know what you should do, but it's the ability to make the decision to do those things. And a lot of times for us, knowing what we should do and the ability to do those things, they don't always go hand in hand. But Paul says for the believer, in order for you and I to walk in wisdom, they should. So look with me at Ephesians chapter 5, beginning in verse 15. Uh, Paul says here right out of the gate, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time for the days are evil. Uh, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And so Paul is again under the context of, of chapter 5 verse 1. He's challenging us to be imitators of God, God who is love, God who is light, and who, according to the writer of Proverbs, uh, who is wisdom. Uh, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. And so there's this idea that, that in walking with God, not only do we reflect his love and his light, but we begin to learn how not just to know the right things, but to do the right things. And so Paul here is going to, to show us what it looks like, give us the command to walk in wisdom, not as unwise, but as wise. And so I want you to see a couple of things. Here's the first thing we see in verse 15. He begins by saying, look carefully. Or the way that I would say that to you in context of this idea of walking is, walk carefully. 
Paul's command to the Ephesian believers in a culture who was hostile to their faith and who was doing everything but what God would have his people to do in a, in a culture that was running after their own desires and their own beliefs and their own demands and their own kind of thoughts about how things should be. Paul says to the Christians, hey, I want you to look carefully how you walk. I want you to pay attention to where you step and what you step on. I want you to be sure that you're not just kind of going through the motions of life, but that you would consider where you're actually living out and how you're living out your life. Uh, the image comes to mind of the Indiana Jones movie where Indy has to get from point A to point B, but uh, there's some stones on the ground that have letters on them, and he's got to spell out the name Jehovah. Do you remember this scene? And he kind of thinks he knows what to do, and he, he begins to, to walk, and if he's not careful, he steps on a stone that is the wrong letter, and it crashes through and opens up this huge pit. Now, Indy has to be careful where he steps. Otherwise, doom is certain. Well, Paul knows that for the Christian, that the, the area around them, the culture around them, and even around us, it wants to pull us away from the Lord. It wants us not to live out uh, the love and the light that we have and that we've experienced from God the Father in our relationship with him through Jesus. Uh, they want us to be like them, if you would. And so Paul, knowing this, says, look, look, for you, you've got to be careful. You've got to pay attention to, to where you step and how you step, to, to be sure that you make decisions that don't take you away from God, but that allow you to continue in fellowship and in relationship with God. Pay attention to your life and to your conduct. Do a self-inventory, if you would, of, of how you think and why you think. I mean, even this week, as I've had some conversations with uh, some friends of mine about the events that have unfolded with the George Floyd murder in Minnesota and, and what that's meant for some race conversations, uh, I've had to do some inventory of my own life and be sure that, that, man, how am I walking in these ways? Is my life, when it comes to treating people of a different color or a different race, is my life more reflective of who God has called me to be or more reflective of who my culture kind of has led me to be? And I've got to be careful that, that, that I don't entertain thoughts that, that allow me to think that someone is lesser than I am. That, that I realize that, man, I want to be careful that what I say and what I do, it shows people and it communicates to people that they have value and that they are not lesser than. Now, that's just an example of a way that when Paul says, look carefully how you walk, not as unwise but as wise, that you and I need to be careful that what we know is actually what we do. That we don't just get through life, but we pay attention to where we're stepping and how we're stepping. But on the same token, you and I need to be careful that, that our lives are not just reactionary, right? Uh, right now, that is the temperature of our culture. Everybody just reacts. It's one of the, the dangers of social media and of instantaneous access to, to media and to television that we can just react in a single moment without having to really even think through those things. And Paul says for the believer, no, you're not to just step wherever you want, but you're to look carefully, pay attention to where you're stepping and what you're doing. Consider uh, the things that you're saying, consider the things that you're doing. I mean, you and I know that we were some things in our lives and, and you probably have even said this about people that, that you don't like to, for people to tell you what to do unless they're willing to do it themselves. Now, there's some folks who it's all about what I say and not what I do. And, and Paul knows that for us, those things cannot be separate. That what we say, we do. We back it up. We're people of integrity because how we walk matters. And so we've got to walk carefully being sure that we're in step with our Father, being sure that we're living out the faith that we say we possess because of our relationship with Christ. So verse 15 says to walk carefully, not as unwise or foolish, but as wise, those who live out what they say they believe. But the second thing he says in verse 16 is that you and I would walk with purpose. And so it's not just paying attention to where I'm stepping, but it, it's looking at what's going on around me. And so Paul says in verse 16, making the best use of the time for the days are evil. In some translations, it actually says redeeming the time. Hey, here's the idea. The idea is that, that you and I have been given certain moments. We all have a certain number of minutes and days and years that make up our lives. 
And that for the Christian who is now in a relationship with God because of Jesus, forgiven, redeemed, made whole, and now given meaning and purpose and finding our satisfaction in a relationship with God, that for us, we don't just exist. Uh, We don't just try to get through things. Instead, we realize that our moments matter. And so we want to walk with purpose. And Paul said to the Ephesian believers, look, people are watching you. People see your life. And so it's going to be easier for you sometimes to just want to kind of withdraw and hide and not live out your faith and not walk with the Lord and not talk about his goodness and not talk about the gospel. It's going to be easier for you if you just want to kind of shelter yourself and hide. But easy is not what God has for you. Uh, the, what, what feels easier or what feels safer is not what God has for you. What God has for you is for you to not consider how much time has he given me and how can I best make use of the moments that I've been given? How can I best redeem the time? One of the ways to say this is, is that you and I need to learn to make every day count, not just to count our days. I, I mean, think about a birthday. It's a, it's a day count, right? Or a year count. How old are you? How, what, what birthday have you recently celebrated? And as you think about that day, you think about the years that make up your, your age. And man, when you think about those, what stand out to you? Well, what are the high points? Are, are there things that you look back on and say, man, those were days that counted? My guess is, if you're like me, there are some times that you think back on your length of your life. And you're just like, man, I don't really remember much about these. I just got through some periods of my life and some years that just kind of, existed. And, and I'm not saying that it's, really that it's, it's not, it's, or that it is wrong that, that you and I can't remember those things, but the purpose is that you and I would begin to live in light of the time that we have left. What am I going to do with these days? What will I do with the moments that God has given to me? And Paul said to the Ephesian believers, guys, don't just hide, just don't just get by, but consider how God might use you right where you are. Walk with a purpose that don't just try to get to whatever is next. Now, isn't that the way you and I tend to be? I mean, even in this period of, of quarantine and wherever you are on the spectrum of, of what you think about or what your opinions are, uh, let me just ask you a question. Haven't you just been at a place for probably several weeks now where you're just like, I'm just ready to get through this. I know even this week, that's where I was. Man, I'm just ready for this to be over and let's get back to the way things were. But is that making the best use of the time? Is that redeeming the time? I mean, Paul's warning was, look, make the best use of the time because the days are are evil. You live in a world where where people are lost in sin. You live in a world where chaos and and relationships are broken and, and pain exists and hurt exists. And for the believer who has experienced the love and the light of God in our lives and who has been commanded to walk in those things, you and I cannot ignore what is around us. But instead, we look for ways to intersect and to have conversations and to show people the love and the light of Jesus. It's not enough to say, man, I'm going to try harder or I want to do better. What we're commanded to do is to actually do what he said to walk in love, to walk in light. And when we do those things, we're actually walking in wisdom. That's what it means to walk with purpose. You see, a wise person that Paul is talking about here recognizes that each moment is a gift. It's not just something to be used or survived. It's not just something to get through. The moments of your life are are gifts. And sure, they look differently. Some of them are good things and and things that we enjoy. Some of them are hard lessons that come kind of in the wrapping paper of misery and of pain, but yet we get through those things and we realize that, man, God showed us some things about his faithfulness and his character, and we learn some things in every moment of our lives. Those moments were given to us so that we might live out our relationship with God as people who live on purpose, not as people who just live for whatever's next. And so Paul says, walk carefully, walk with purpose. But then you get to verse 17. Listen to what he says. He says, for you and I to walk closely. To walk closely. Verse 17 says, therefore don't be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. I don't know where that language hits you, the will of the Lord, but a lot of times when we talk about the will of the Lord, we talk about 
uh, big picture things, where we'll live or, or what's our next big step in life or, or when we were younger, who are we going to marry or where are we going to go to college? What job will we do? And there's these big picture things, but, but Paul really doesn't, I don't think, have those specific things in. Although I think that when you, when you think about what Paul's talking about, if we could uncover what he means, I think some of the other things begin to fall into place. You see, what Paul's speaking of when he says for you and I to, to understand what the will of the Lord is, he's talking about God's will for us to grow in our relationship with him. That we would grow in our understanding and in our wisdom. That we would grow in our relationship, that we begin to live out more and more who God has called us to be. And so we want to, we want to do that. To not be, to be fool or to be foolish would be to ignore what God has for us and to, to push God away. But to understand what the will of the Lord is, is to draw close to him, to press into him, to, to pick up his word and to see what he said. You see, the wise aren't those who do just what they think might be right, but they're those who begin to live out what God has commanded them to do and who become who God has commanded them to become. Uh, probably one of the, the best verses for seeing this is Proverbs 3. In Proverbs 3, you probably have heard verse 5 and 6, but I want to read for you 5 through 8. Listen to what Solomon here in Proverbs 3 says. He says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Did you hear what he said at the very beginning? Solomon said, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. It was to, to place all that you believe and all that you are, to place it completely on the Lord. Just as I'm completely sitting on this stool, that you and I would come to a place where we trust in the Lord with all that we are. But then he said, don't lean on your own understanding. Don't just do what you think is right or what you think might be acceptable. Don't just pursue what you want to see and how, what makes you feel good. But instead, lean on the Lord. And as you walk, as you do the things that you know God has called you to do, you're acknowledging him. And as you acknowledge him and as you give him uh, more and more of your life, what you find is he begins to make your paths straight. He begins to lead you in ways that help you to accomplish all the things that God has for you. And what you find is that when you begin to walk in that way, when you begin to, to know him in that way, when you draw close to him, what you find is that he begins to give you exactly what you've always been looking for. He satisfies you and he gives you the things that make your heart full. In fact, I love that it says next, be not wise in your own eyes. He talks about not just saying, hey, I've arrived, but instead looking and listening to the Lord. Uh, the idea is that if you and I can walk closely with God, we are walking in wisdom. We are walking in the things that God would have for us because as we are close to God, he directs our steps. He makes straight our paths. I think about as a dad times that I've had my kids um, at big ball games, LSU football game, or, or even walking at Six Flag or Disney World. As a parent, what do I want my kids to do when they're young? I want them to stay close, right? We get in those crowded environments. I don't want them just running around and trying to figure things out uh, without me. Why? Because just like I told you in the very beginning today, when I'm walking around Antigua and I don't know where I am and I don't know where I'm going, I know that my kids are the same way in crowded environments. There's danger out there. There's, uh, there's the ability to get lost and to, to not be able to find their way back. Uh, there's all those things lurking out there that for them as small children, they don't know. But as a father, I'm going to say to my kids, stay close. And if my kids will stay close to me, if they'll walk closely with me, I'm going to take them to the places that they want to go. I'm going to take them to the places that are good and that are fun and that accomplish whatever it is that we're there to do. I'm going to get them where they need to be. You see, I think for Paul, that's what he's pointing us to. That our Heavenly Father knows where we need to be. He knows what we need to do. And he's not left us on our own to just figure it out. But instead, he's given us his word. Instead, he, he's given us his revelation of himself and his commands. And what he says is, draw close to me. Uh, come, come near, stay close. And as you stay close, learn from me. Read what I've said, study what I've said. 
Isn't it crazy that for a lot of us as Christians that we never pick up God's word where God is saying to us, hey, just stay close. I want to take you somewhere new. I want to give you wisdom. I mean, I know even today as I say the word wisdom, there's some of you that you've been praying for wisdom and for discernment for some situations and things in your life. And you're, you're praying and you're saying, God, show me, God, show me. Hey, can I give you some encouragement today that it may be for you that, that you're waiting on this big picture answer and the only way to get the big picture answer is for you to begin to take what God's already asked of you. Maybe it's simply repenting of your sin and not trying to just add God to your life, but fully surrendering to him. Uh, maybe it's, it's some facts that, that in the last few weeks you've realized there's some things in your heart that, that don't line up with what God has said and what you know to be true about his word. And so you're not drawing close, but instead you're kind of keeping God at arm's length. Hey man, instead of doing those things, why not press into his word, see what he has to say. And, and even if you watch that and you say, man, look, that sounds good. But when I read the Bible, it just it doesn't. I don't get it. There's some things that are hard and I can't see. Hey, I've got really good news for you. That if you belong to the Lord, the Lord wants you to understand his word. I believe it's probably one of the reasons that some of you have tuned in for the last several weeks. You might not have ever even come to a church, but you've watched online because you want some, there's something in you that's looking for answers, that's searching. And what's happening is you are beginning to be able to draw close because God is drawing you to himself. But even for us as Christians, sometimes we don't pick up the very thing that God is saying, hey, this is where I want to give you life. This is where I want to shape you and mold you. And yet in Proverbs 3, we heard him say, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Don't lean on your understanding. Lean on what God has said. And Paul's echoing that here. He knows that the Father is saying to us, stay close. Listen to his word. But the one that walks in wisdom doesn't just read it and say, okay, that's good, I should do it. The one who walks in wisdom also begins to actually live out what they read. That's why James in his letter would say, don't be just doers of the word or hearers of the word, but be doers. Don't just listen to what God has said, but be doers. That's why later James would say, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask. If any of you doesn't understand what to do, let him ask God who gives generously to all. Well, how does God give wisdom? Through his word and through our relationship with him. You see, to walk in wisdom is to look carefully how we walk and, and not to just get through life and push through life, but to be careful how we step and how we live, to look at our lives and say, man, am I living as God would have me to live? But it's also to, to walk with purpose. Knowing that these moments that I've been given in my life, even as they are hard and difficult and the things that I don't understand, that God's not wasting any of this, but instead he's given me insight to live out the things he's asked of me in scripture. He wants me to walk in love, to walk in light, to walk in wisdom, that I might not just be a person who people know, their, know my name, but that I would be a person who allows others to see the beauty and the power of Jesus in and through my life. That's what it means to walk this way. And finally, to be a person who just walks closely with my heavenly father. Now, that's not an invitation for super Christians, for those who are pastors or leaders or those who are just on another different level than we are. No, for every person today watching this video who you have placed your faith in Christ, the father has invited you to stay close. He's invited you to walk closely. So take his word. Read it. Talk to others about it. In fact, if you look at the next few verses, that Paul actually begins to talk about that, about how what it means to be filled with the Spirit and to address one another with psalms and hymns and thanksgiving to God and to, to hold one another accountable and to encourage one another and to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. He's talking about the family of God, centered on the Word of God that allows us to draw close to our Father. Because when you're close with your Father, He knows what He's doing and he knows where he's going. He knows what you need. So hear him say to you today, stay close. Walk beside me. Let me give you what you need. And let me use you in a way that I created you. Let me pray for you today. God, I thank you for this moment where we're just reminded of this idea of everything that we're learning, that God, it's not just about knowledge, but it's about relationship and actually living out what we're learning. 
And so, Father, I pray as we read Paul's words today, God, I pray that you would help us to look carefully how we walk. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the best use of the time because the days are evil. God, you see our world. You see the chaos. You see the brokenness. And we have no answers. But you are our hope. You are our anchor. And so therefore, we don't want to be foolish. But we want to understand what your will is. That we may live it out as those who have been forever changed by the good news of your son, Jesus, who has redeemed us, forgiven us, and made us new. And then, God, we want to hear your invitation to just stay close. That we might walk in wisdom, knowing what you've asked of us and actually living it out. God, would you help us to walk this way? God, thank you for this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. See you guys real soon. Again, thanks for joining us today. And uh, if, if something Ben said today, if you would like for us to uh, start kind of a, a dialogue with you this week and help you um, through that, uh, we as your pastors would love to walk with you through whatever you're going through. And I know it's difficult right now and it's kind of this season of, of pandemic. Um, but if you would like for us to... Um, to contact you this week, please take a moment and fill out the decision card link. It should be in the comment section or in the discussion box. Just click that link and we would love just to follow up with you this week. Also, if you're looking for a church to connect with, um, there should be a connect card link in the description or the comments of this video. Uh, just click on that and fill it out. We would love just to connect with you, whether you're thinking through membership or, or, or baptism, whatever that looks like for you. Uh, we would love just to start a conversation with you about that. And uh, lastly, uh, for those of you who call FBC Sterlington your home, uh, if, if you're wanting to give today, then you can also just click that giving link that is in the comment section or in the description of this video. Uh, but thank you guys for everything that you do. Uh, I know this is a weird season that we're in, but we are getting through it together. And uh, we're excited about phase two, uh, moving into phase two next week. We hope to see some of you uh, back on our physical location. Uh, but until then, you guys have an incredible week and we will see you very soon.